Hello, I'm David Blair, and welcome to Songwriting from the Heart. This is episode five, and it'll be the first part of a four-part series I want to do on uh, getting through writer's block and just really um, getting to the inspiration that is going to work for you and get you in the mood and have you flowing, having songs just flow to you. You can't even keep up with them to finish them all. Okay, so um, there are four parts to a song that are really like key, um, um, and that they'll, they'll basically they go. Uh, you got, of course, your melody. You get your harmony, which is the chords that uh, that support it. You know the harmonies to it, um, and then you have the lyric, of course, and then rhythm. This is the part that is probably the most least the the least talked about part of songwriting, which, but I think is one of the most uh, one of the most important parts of songwriting is rhythm. So today we're going to start on rhythm. Actually, I, I think it's such a great way. I've written so many songs just from rhythm. Um, you know, Jaff Talking by, by um, the Bee Gees was apparently written just by driving over this bridge in Florida that's just took a chick, 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 you know, every time they drove over this thing and they had this rhythm and they got this great song called Jaff Talking out of it. So, rhythm's huge. It defines categories of music, reggae, you know, punk. Um, there's just specific time um, time signatures and rhythms that are, are unique to each genre of music. There's jazz and all kinds of different things, classical and different kinds of genres of music, mainly uh, due to the rhythm. That's it. It's the only thing that separates that genre of music is the rhythm. So today I wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about that, give you some examples and let you get to it. Um, um, let you get right into the inspiration. So, um, one of the things uh, well, I wanted to give you some examples. So one of the one of the first examples that I go to is um, is George Michael. One of my favorite albums of all time is Faith from 1987. It was the number one song of 1987, and uh, also the number one song of 1988 was was uh, was it One More Try, which is a slow song, a slow ballad. But uh, one of the rhythms that you can play, you can I'm going to give you some examples of songs that you can do that you can listen to. Um, and I'm going to just go through them right now and play it. Today's a really easy and fun episode, but I want you basically just to take a look, observe, listen, and then go do your thing. Like, have some fun, play with some rhythms, and see what comes out, because it's really, really, it's a lot of fun. So here you go. Um, if you guys may know this song. Oh, well, I guess it would be nice. So you got the. I mean, that's unique to his song, in a way. You know, I actually used it. I wrote a song called "Never Want to Live Without," it. and I didn't actually. It was kind of done, certainly not on purpose. But a rhythm is not patented. You can take any rhythm and, and do it your own thing. But I have my song. It's called "Never Want to Live Without," and it's like. It's a little bit slightly different. It's not dun dun at the end, but. Right, and I could play it like You know that we had done some crazy things together. Remember running naked through the pot together. It wasn't long ago we professed a love and it was all good. So it's a totally different song, right? Uh, but anyway, that's one of my songs. Never wanna live without. But um, anyway, so that's George Michael. Uh, one uh, another uh, like, so I'm just gonna go through some uh, different examples of rhythms that you can just literally copy and and go for it. Just write a song with a right that or a simple reggae song or is uh, I'm, I'm yours. So on the two and the four, the down the down the downstrokes. If you're going one two three four one two three four one two four two four. Well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to beat you, you were so hot that I melted. You fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. All right, so you all know that song, beautiful reggae song. I mean, I wanna love you. Another 
really great one. Now, also, it's not only just a simple, the rhythm like that. One of the things that you can have fun with as well is doing what I love to hear in, you actually hear it in techno music and in, in-house, is a lot of, uh, a lot of drops, if you will. It's like, so it's, it's like... And they do these like drops and it's like do 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 what they call like a dragging trip like a one two three and then it drops. Uh, Bob Marley does that a, a little, you know like I wanna love you and treat you right. I wanna love you every day and every night. And anyway, he does he does that if you if you check out his songs go to, go to check it out. Bob Marley is this love. And brum bum 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 doom doom boom right he does that up uh, but Marley is a good episode, a good good uh, song to check out um, if you're more of a ballad writer definitely check out of course Adele someone like you the piano is doing that do no 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 it's a great way to give lift to a song that um, that is is a great way to give lift to a song that say maybe slower I heard you know so or it's like for in C. Uh, you know, so I, I heard <laughs> the settle down that you. So if you so instead of going as. I I mean, it's a great song, it's gonna sound good almost either way, but that's beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, it's got these eighth notes or sixteenth notes. That would be sixteenth notes, I think. <laughs> um, in there. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a bit of a way to do your ballads and keep them still up tempo. Um, another example of a song that is that's got some one, uh, yeah, Sex on Fire. Another example of a song that's very, very simply written, really two chords and only one chord extra for, for like the change to the chorus or at the end of the chorus. Actually, no, yeah, the end of the chorus. That's it. It's got one tag chord. That's it. It's this two chord song pretty much the whole time. Lay where you lay. Don't make a sound. Yeah, I know the watcher. The watcher. <laughs> so that's it. That's the only that's the only extra chord there. So just for the guitar to go and do that little screaming thing, and it kind of feels like the song needs it. Um, so like I said, I always talk about I always talk about two things: simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. I will always <laughs> I will always champion simplicity because the melody and the and the lyrics really have a chance to shine. The simpler the chords are, but sometimes you got to write a complicated song, you know, um, uh, chord wise, you know. And then, mm -mm. Feel you touch me in the morning rain Like the Bee Gees <laughs> I'm not the best with lyrics <laughs> And you come to me on a Tony this, this is not good, this is really should be <laughs> I should have the lyrics for you But the point is there's a lot of chords in the song But it works great and it's a beautiful Beautiful example of a song that, um, yeah, has a lot of chords, but it works, you know. But, but the the contents there. So, but anyway, that one's also a cool one for for uh, a nice setup. Mm. Right. So yeah, that's a cool one. Um, what else? Uptown Funk. So I say just be conscious of what you're doing. Uh, you know, Billie Jean. You know, you got that one. Um, Kings of Leon, uh, Sweater Weather, so songs to check out. So here's the thing, I'm just going to give you a list of some songs to check out, like what I've said um, right now. Check out these rhythms and just go for it. And then I would say 
copy these rhythms, write, literally just copy them, take them and write a song in that rhythm just for the heck of it. You can't, you, there's no patent on rhythms and chords. You can take rhythms and chords from anything and bottom line is write your song, say your message. Like I've said in previous episodes, give yourself time though as well. I mean, I write a song every single Sunday, as you know, and I give myself the time to do it. And there's so much that goes on throughout the week. To be honest with you, I have several, several ideas by the time song, Songline Sunday comes. And uh, it's really, really quite easy. You could easily write a song a day um, if you gave yourself an hour or two hours a day to do it. Uh, there's, there's no reason why you couldn't. Um, so to end today's uh, part one of four parts uh, of, uh, of, of songwriting, of, the, of getting past the writer's block and finding your inspiration and writing from your heart and truly getting to what you want to say to people and giving your message out there and having your voice shine. Uh, today, of course, is rhythm. So expose yourself to rhythm. Listen to house, listen to techno, listen to country, listen to rap, listen to uh, classical, you know, three, four time, uh, you know, waltz, you know. This is six to eight time. This is John Mayer. If you want to write a nice ballad, this is a great rhythm to try. You got the one, two, three, four, five, six, so one. So you got that one too. So okay, so here we go. Uh, check out a song by uh, called "Strong" by London Grammar. It's a. It's got a really nice. Uh, and that's again a very a very ballad type song. So London Grammar, uh, "Strong," "Sex" by the 1975. Uh, Sweater Weather by The Neighborhood, Is This Love, Bob Marley, Sex on Fire, Kings of Leon, sorry with all the sex, I don't know why. Do Your Thing, Basement Jacks, oh my god. I mean, what a great song. Faith, George Michael, Billy Jean, Michael Jackson, Someone Like You, Adele, Uptown Funk, Bruno Mars, the list goes on and on and on. You basically you can listen to whatever you want to. Just get your inspiration, get in there, and notice why that song, the rhythms. By the way, for those who are more advanced songwriters and, and you're doing your thing, a lot of, a lot of times people, you, if you listen to an album and it all sounds the same, it's not because they're using the same chords, it's because they're using the same rhythm. Every song sounds the same only because of the rhythm. The rhythm is what changes, is what gives you the difference in your songwriting. That's what's going to make the difference in, in when you perform live and it's going what's, what's gonna, what's gonna to make the difference when you record your album. That's what's going to make the difference. Are you using different time signatures? Are you using different rhythms? That's what's going to make the difference on your album. So you want to be aware of that as well. Okay. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, I've had a lot of fun, uh, as I always do, doing random examples that come to my head most of the time. But uh, I did list out these songs that I checked out beforehand. And there's, there's of course, a ton more. So any uh, examples of you think of great rhythms, of cool things that you have picked up on, put them in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Uh, next week we will uh, do part two of breaking past writer's block and continuing with uh, writing songs from the heart. So uh, take care and we'll talk to you very soon. Ciao.